This type of intelligence asks questions, finds solutions, and reflects on the problem-solving process. Think about what you're trying to learn in a puzzle or a formula. You can ask questions or allow yourself to experiment with your own hypothesis to find solutions or new answers. They concentrate on symbols, designs, words in order to bridge that wonderful gap between the mathematical and the verbal logic. It's creating an outline to understand a subject, maybe doing something step by step. And also it allows them to stay organized and to track what they're learning in a logical sequence. The logical mathematical intelligence is understanding complex problems, conceptualizing relationships between symbols, processes, and People with this logical intelligence are abstract thinkers and they are attracted to logic and reasoning. They're good at investigation and the scientific process. They learn best by logic. Some other common characteristics is that they might easily do math in their head, they like strategy games, or they may even seem like they have a computer in your mind. You know people like that, that they really love the math and they're able to quickly compute something, even complex equations. They love science experiments and they may organize things by category or even become an abstract thinker. They're always looking for rational explanations as they wonder how things are going to work. So Don Quixote in the novel by Miguel Cervantes really uses some wonderful ingenious logic. So Sancho Panzas, which is Quixote's sidekick, is made the governor of a remote island nation and takes an oath to uphold all of its laws. The customs dictate that every new arrival must be questioned by a guard as to the purpose of the visit. If the foreigner is going to speak truth, he's allowed free passage onto the island. But if he tells a lie, he's going to be hanged. The tourist control system seems to work for a while until one day a visitor comes to the island who answers the guard's question with a puzzling reply. I came here to be hanged. This presented the islanders with a dilemma. If they allow the man free passage onto the island, then he'll be guilty of a lie and should have been hanged. Yet if they hang the visitor, he's going to be told, telling the truth and therefore he'll be allowed to live. Barbara McClintock won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for Physiology for her work in microbiology in 1983. Her powers of deduction and observation really illustrate this logical mathematical intelligence. Sometimes we may even want to call it a scientific thinking. So let's look at this. When she was a researcher at Cornell in the 1920s, McClintock was faced one day with a problem. While theory dictated that 50% of pollen sterility in corn, her research assistant was finding plants that were only 25 to 30 percent sterile. She was disturbed by this discrepancy. She left the cornfield and returned to her office where she sat down and thought for half an hour. She records, suddenly I jumped up and ran back to the cornfield. At the top of the field, I shouted, Eureka, I have it. I know what the 30 percent sterility is. They asked me to prove it. I sat down with a paper bag and a pencil and I started from scratch, which I had not done at all in my laboratory. It had all been done so fast in my head. The answer had come and I had run. Now I worked it out step by step. It was an intricate series of steps and I came out with the same result. They looked at the material and it was exactly as I said it was. It worked out exactly as I had diagrammed it. Now, did I know without having done it on paper? And why was I so sure? This slideshow is actually part of a course called Be Super Smart, and it's available on Udemy.com. During this course, we're going to look at testing and how you can really discover what intelligences you use, your preferred intelligences, as well as your less preferred intelligences. And although Howard Gardner doesn't really support any testing, there are some ways that you can discover which intelligences come naturally to you. We also look at examples of historical figures and how they've used the multiple intelligences. We investigate the dimensions of each of these multiple intelligences, as well as explore what they are and experience each one, even if they are less preferred. Then, lastly, we develop and we create a plan to expand any desired intelligences so that we can create them and make something greater for ourselves.